During the flu season, it's important to remember that after touching public objects, it's a good idea to either wash your hands or sanitize. I am currently at the Don Ale Farm, where they are converting this farm to a concert venue for Luke Bryan. If you ever feel like you're in danger, the free app Rave Guardian will help keep you safe. The Lawrence Public Library is offering these sad lamps for visitors to use to soak up some rays while hiding from the cooler temperatures. Well, during flu season, we try to keep our homes as germ-free as possible, but what about where you work? KSNT student journalist Dan Garrett explains that with the highest amount of flu cases in almost 10 years, you might want to bring hand sanitizer the next time you go to work. Your television remote, your toothbrush, these are things we touch every day without giving them a second thought. But like so many things in our day-to-day -day life, they're covered in bacteria. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the 2018 flu season has sent the most people to hospitals since the 2009 swine flu. For businesses like the Kansas Sampler and Topeka, customers like Haley Kraxner come in and out all day. They touch merchandise, possibly spreading germs. I can see like where a lot of people are trying to clean things up a little bit more, and obviously I know touching things, I know sometimes I'm like, well, I need to be a little more careful with that just because I know I'm not sick, but at the same time, things that are spreading, I'm just like, need to be more cautious of that. Store manager Lacey Fike says she regularly wipes down and cleans for employees and customers. Exactly. We sanitize our registers throughout the day in workstations that different customers might be touching for employees to keep them healthy. And if we do have any employees that aren't feeling well, we make sure that they're not coming into work sick. During flu season, it's important to remember that after touching things, especially at public places, it's a good idea to wash your hands or sanitize. It's something Haley says she's very aware of. I think I definitely have washed my hands more than I ever have. Um, I don't know some of those things that I usually do anyway. If you get the flu, the CDC recommends waiting 24 hours after your fever is gone before going into public places. For KSNT News, I'm KU student journalist Dan Garrett. The CDC reports that although they can't fully predict that flu, what flu virus will be most prominent each year, getting the flu shot can reduce the risk of catching it by 60%. The city of Topeka and Topeka's Habitat for Humanity are teaming up to help homeowners keep their houses up to code. This is one of the Facebook videos posted by Habitat for Humanity. Once a month, they'll show viewers how to make repairs on their house. A Topeka Habitat for Humanity spokesperson says the response to the videos has been positive. We wanted to highlight the resources that we have available, not only through our Topeka Habitat for Humanity repair programs, but resources that are available at our organization's ReStore where people can get items to fix their homes at a low cost. From chipping paint and patching roofs, the videos will show viewers tips and tricks on how to fix these and more on a budget. That's important to new homeowner Mary Fulliard. Uh, the homeowner we are purchasing the house from definitely let some things lapse. Fulliard says the videos will benefit people who don't have the handiwork knowledge of others. Not everybody has the mechanical inclination and, and when they see how simple it is to do some of these modifications, it would definitely give them the courage to take it on themselves. Habitat Interim Manager John Roberts is the man behind the video series. He chose the format because he wanted to show viewers rather than tell them. Well, to, to let them know how to do it, mainly, and then that way they do it correctly this time, and then that way they don't have to do it again two or three or four years. Robert says he'll be discussing roof and gutter repairs in the next videos. Reporting for KSNT News, I'm KU student journalist Dan Garrett. Deb Young has lived in Lawrence for the past 30 years and had never even heard of Independence Inc., a company that helps disabled people in their everyday lives. That all changed in 2013 when Young was involved in a car accident. And a man came up the wrong way on the interstate and hit me head on. I lost both of my legs and my left arm. And when I first was able to remember everything, I had no use of my right arm. Young's everyday activities became extremely difficult. That was my first hurdle is how do I move about? How do I sit up? Um, how do I feed myself? Young had to come to terms with what happened, so she became a board member of Independence Inc., where she began sharing her story of triumph with others. Co-executive director for Independence Inc., Bob McKessick, says that having someone to look up to can help people with new disabilities. To have a role model, an example of someone that gets beyond the disability and starts focusing on what they can do. As for her crown and sash, Young won Miss Wheelchair Kansas as well as the Woman of Perseverance Award at a national competition. I was just so thrilled that whatever was inside me, the judges actually saw the kind of person I truly aim to be. 
McKessick says that Young story is what Independence Inc. is all about. It's an illustration that every person has their own lifestyle and that every person has their own path. Young plans to continue advocating and says she wouldn't trade her experiences for anything. And if I had to get my legs back and lose everything I've had in the last four years, I would have to say keep my legs. A federal judge dropped the Title IX case ex-rowers made against KU. Daisy Tackett and Sarah McClure sued the university in 2016. They say the university mishandled the rowers' claims of sexual assault by a KU football player. Attorneys representing KU and the two women filed joint requests asking the court last week to diminish both cases. In the original case, the women claimed that KU should have known there was an, a heightened risk of sexual assault at the Jayhawk Towers, saying that football players were unsupervised. KU dismissed that player in 2016 after the Institutional Opportunity Access Center investigated and found him responsible for the assault. Both rowers are no longer enrolled at the university. We tried contacting Tackett for a comment, but her phone no longer accepts calls.